Um, let's go over the warm up. So you have to use this spinner to answer the three questions. One thing that I've noticed when I, I noticed about our warm up and exit tickets that I graded this past weekend was that uh, we were some of us are just putting answers down. You're only, you're only going to get one point. So make sure you explain more. Okay, you got to show some work. Okay, so this would be one way to show how you're coming to your understanding. Um, number one, what's the fra um, what fraction of the spinner is shaded gray? How do I start answering this question? What's the first step I need to figure out here? Josh? Uh, divide the circle into fractions. I have to divide this into fractions. Do I divide it into the biggest piece or the smallest pieces? Smallest. Biggest, not smallest. Smallest pieces. So what are the two pieces that are the smallest, or three? The white and one of the The white, um, yeah, and then the gray shaded. So if I look at this, I can see that that's a quarter of the circle. So and that would make two pieces. So if two pieces make a quarter, how many would make a half? Four. And then how many would make a, a whole? Eight. Eight. So that means that this is one eighth. So we have a a white piece that's one eighth, and every other piece that's that shape is also one eighth. So what fraction is gray? Presley, what'd you get? Um, I got three eighths. Three eighths. I look at this, I have one eighth there. I know that this is already broken into two. So I would have three eighths would be gray. What fraction is marked with diagonal lines? Talk to your tables and how'd you get that? Go. So um, I was listening to Anthony. Anthony said you would add up these three plus the next one, so that'd be four. It'd be four eighths, or I could reduce that to one half. The last question suppose that you spun this spinner, this particular spinner, 72 times. How many times would you expect to get white? Talk to your table about how you solve that. Go. Um, for three, I got about nine times. It's exactly nine. Oh, well. So, here I have 72 is my total spins. I know my theoretical probability of getting a white is 1 8th. Because that's only as much as it's covered. So if I spin it 72 times, I can expect that 1 8th of those 72 spins are going to be white. So I go 72 times 1 8th. That is going to equal 72 eighths, and that can be reduced to 9. Again, I'm showing you the math, providing an example, which is what you want to do on your warm-up, if you want to receive full credit when I grade these. Questions about the warm-up? Any, any questions? Any questions? All right. So a couple things. I will be collecting, and I'm telling you this now, I will be collecting last week's warm-up on Wednesday. Okay? That one was only Monday and Tuesday, right? Had two days on it. Yep. So that will be collected on Wednesday. Again, there will be no late work accepted for the warm-up and exit ticket. You don't have it? You don't have it. That is for you to figure out. Yeah, I mean, he's on there. That was one of the exit tickets. Yeah. So, um, 
Make sure of one thing you might want to do is to check your warm up and exit ticket to make sure that you do have that done and that it is up to date. Because on Wednesday, like I said, it will be due. Whether or not you have it, that's up to you. You don't have it, I'm not going to accept it. So you have to keep track of your stuff. Okay? If you do have it, then great. Pass that in. Um, remember, uh, homework, you either do it or you don't. Okay? Trying to prepare you guys for eighth grade, which is their policy. Okay, you get credit when it's there, and you don't get any credit when it's not. It is one tenth of your grade. I think it's the easiest way to boost your grade because I'm not looking for right or wrong. I am looking for you to answer the question thoroughly. So if it does say explain, take guess what I expect you to do. Explain. Okay? So make sure you read the question thoroughly. Um, you get a day for a day. So if you miss a day, it's due the next day. You don't get more days. And whose job is it to remember to pass in their work when they miss school? Not Yours, not mine. Yours. Okay? Yeah, so, um, my job is to make sure that I'm grading it and, and giving you the appropriate feedback. Your job, if you miss school, is to make sure you pass it in to me appropriately at the right time. I'm not going to track you down. And if you pass it in to me late, it's late, I'm not going to accept it. Um, make sure, another way to, um, make sure you check with all your teachers if you miss school. You come back, that should be the first thing you do, is to go and touch base with your teachers. Whether you come in early, stay late, or at lunch. But you need to figure out what you're missing. Reflections, they are due tomorrow. Okay, that's um, 16 points. So I gave them to you last Wednesday. I am expecting those to be done for tomorrow. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, today we're looking at using um, probability to increase our chances of winning. We've already looked at this. This is in a continuation of um, our work that we did on Thursday. If you could go ahead, um, put your warm up away, and turn to page 60 and get out your homework if you did do it. I would like everybody to reacquaint themselves with number four. We're going to review number four, which was part of the homework. So um, Molly has this game. How many times is she spinning these spinners? Uh, 20. 20 times each. So we know, we know that this data set, all three data sets down there, how many data points do they have? They have 20 for each one. So I have 20 pieces of data in set one, set two, and set three. So... How do I start figuring out which spinner goes with which data set? Chris? Uh, you could, like, look at the data set and see what like, the numbers came out the most. Okay. So what do you compare? When you say the most, what are you... Comparing? Yeah. Like comparing, uh, I don't know, the numbers. The 
numbers to the dot spinner. To the spinner. So when I look at the spinner, what do I notice about this spinner? They're equal. What else? It's third. That's third. It's good. Anything else? So if this is one third of the spinner, and that's one third, and that's one third, what? Sh and this is theoretical. What should I expect in my data set, or Donna? Um, for each number to come up close, like equally, like equally likely chance. Equally likely chance of one-third, 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 out of 20 spins. Now, down here, is this theoretical probability that I'm looking at or experimental? Experimental. Experimental. But we do know that our experimental should be fairly close to our theoretical. So I'm looking for data that has, they're roughly equal, the ones, twos, and threes, or they're roughly close to one third each. So go ahead, talk to your tables. Which data set is that? Go. So this is what I'm getting here. When I look at data, data set two, I have five twos out of 20, which is one fourth. Is that close to one third? Pretty close. I have eight, um, I have three eight twentieths and seven twentieths for one, which is almost perfectly one third. So I look at these, these are all, oh, these are all very similar to each other. So data set two belongs to spinner A. Okay, go ahead and figure out what data set goes with B and C and why have that. Um, make sure to talk to your partners comparing the theoretical to the experimental. Go. There are half, there are two. Well, I don't know what I said. Um, there are two, four. What? Do you want to hear my explanation? Yeah. I got the third set of data was recorded using Spinner B because two is the most likely on both of them, and one and three were almost equally likely. Oh, okay. What was that? What, which one do you think is C? All right, let's come back together here. So what I liked about this one is if I look at spinner B and spinner C, what do I notice about one of the numbers? Two has greater. Two has more outcomes or a greater chance of having an outcome because here it's 50% of spinner B and it's also 50% of spinner C. So that wouldn't be a great number to start comparing because they're both 50%. Here in spinner B, this has a one-fourth chance and that has a one-fourth chance. So my outcomes for one and three in my experiment should be pretty close to being equal. Whereas over here, I have a one-fourth chance to getting a one and a one-sixth chance on getting a three. So I should have a greater chance of getting a one than a three, and that should help me figure out which data set goes with um, the spinner. And what did you guys conclude? Hey, Elise. What did you conclude? For what'd you get, Chris? Spinner B. 
Spinner B with which data set? Uh, spinner B would go with the third data set. Because down here, if you notice, if I count the threes, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I have five twentieths, which is exactly one fourth. And then if I count the ones, I have one, two, three, four twentieths, which is almost one fourth. So those are super similar. I could cross check and go to the first data set where you notice you have one, two, three, four, five, which is one fourth. And then you get three and it's one, two, three twentieths, which would make it almost one sixth. Any questions about that? We're right on time. All right, put away your homework. Okay, um, we are going to today, whoops, I'm going to review a little bit of what we did with roller derby and kind of get you started on thinking about a couple things. One is the theoretical chance and the other one is the experimental. I have my experimental results up here from my, um, from my experiment. Obviously, I didn't get any ones when I rolled these two dice. I got two, a sum of two, two times. Okay? So Quinn's already asking me, how many times did you roll? How could I figure that out? Add them all up. So when I add all these up, I get 47. So I rolled the dice 47 times before all my cubes were gone from my board. So knowing that I rolled 47 times, how many times did I get a seven? Nine. So what is that? You might want to get your calculators out. Because I know that this nine represents how many sevens I got. And this represents total trials. So what was my probability? When I was playing this game, what was my probability of getting a 7? 19. 19. 0.19 was my probability. Or 19%. So 19% of the time, I got a 7. So, because we were looking at experimentally, that's what I got. And we're talking about, I wonder if I can play this game and have a better strategy and win it. I need to know what my theoretical probability is. So, I want you to talk to your tables about this. How would I figure out what my theoretical probability is of getting a 7? Which is a sum. Talk your tables. How would I figure out the theoretical probability? Go. Well, seven is a part of the whole So I was just listening to Olive, and Olive immediately went here, and she said, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six chances to get a seven. Those are, those are six outcomes to get just a seven. But what do I need to know in order to figure out the probability? I have to figure out how many total outcomes are there with two dice. I have six for seven, but there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have all those sums. I just figured out the sum for seven. So how do I do this? How do I figure out? I could list them all. How would I figure out the total number of sums with two dice. Couldn't make a tree diagram. 
Okay, I could go, Ben was saying like, well, one, if I roll a one, what are my choices now? Here, one, another one, three, four, five, six. That would be a sum of a two, sum of three, sum of four, sum of five, six, and a sum of seven. That's just with one. How, how many ways are there to get one in when you're rolling a dice? One out of six. And then how many ways is there to get a, another one? One out of six. So my chances of getting a sum of a two, which is a one and one, is one out of, what does that 36 represent? My total outcomes. That tells me how many outcomes I have. So let's go back. Now talk to your table. What's the theoretical probability of getting a sum of seven? Go, talk to your tables. Okay. So there's a six for the seven. So then that's a six out of 36. So, I have a total of six, a total of um, sums of seven, I have six. Listed them right here. And then I have a total outcomes of 36. So my theoretical probability of getting a sum of seven in this game is one sixth or basically 17% chance. And this is what's interesting. 17% chance is my theoretical probability, Ryan. And what did I get experimentally? 19. 19, pretty close. I mean, I did roll the die 47 times, so I know it's going to be pretty close. Um, this is what you're doing today. You're going to need to use your information from Thursday to answer the following questions. So the following, we're going to start with our partners that we had on Thursday. Who is not here on Thursday? Good. So we're going to start with our partners. We're going to answer A4 and A5. If you've already done that, then you go to independent practice. You're going to answer these by yourself. And then you're going to answer C as well. Once you're done, and I had a number of kids start this, and you can do this pretty quick. B1 will take a little bit of time because it asks you to list all the outcomes. How many outcomes are there? 36. 36. You need to list them. You can list them this way where you have the sum and all the different ways to get it. Or you can do it with the tree diagram like Ben was suggesting. Um, once you get through these, you go to C and then we play roller derby game again. You don't have to keep track of anything. You just play it and see who can get the most pieces off the board. Now that you know the real strategy behind it. Any questions about? Okay, start with your partner practice. If you're done with the partner practice, then you're already on your independent practice. You need to use the results, and you need to be with your partner so you guys can answer A4, A5 together. All right. A4, A5. Thank you. 
Can't get seven on dice.
you need this question. You don't need to list everything. Two, three, four, five. Yes. Yep, there you go. Yep. Yeah, not you can do Not up your day. No, this is all theoretical. You just gotta make sure you do the uh, what are the turnaround facts? Yeah. Right? Switch your room back and room switch, right? No. You don't know that? Yeah. It's no on. It's every day now. You learn that on the third Which number you want? It says it was all the possible sums, period, where all the pairs that you could possibly get. No, just all all the pairs. We have to find a sum of like Mr. Mick, from B2, do you just have to say one to two classes? Well, you wouldn't have one. Oh, Mr. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. So you need to list all the pairs. This is the pair. That's a pair. That's a pair. I just want to refer to And you need to do that for. Okay. I Every time you're rolling, There and then, as soon as someone's done, then they can be your partner. Presley and Chris go. Mm, no. Uh, then go with Jaden. Find the sum means what's one plus six. So what are the you can just list all the sums, you don't need to. Remember, guys, if you're playing roller derby, you don't need to keep track. But you do need to use the strategy that you came up with. Are we playing with the partners? Uh, no, you can play, you play with new partners. Oh, 
Oh, can we choose a Well, no, it's just when, so put your name up there, and the next person is done. Which is Elise Tanner. Oh, you, wow. You mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard I heard that you guys just enjoyed I'll just charge you for every paper you miss. Sylvia, you take very serious there. Oh, my God. 
are due tomorrow. Please make sure that you have those finished tomorrow because if you forget yours you will not be handing that in to me. I don't know. Um, also in some board games um, you can end up in jail. One way to get out of jail is to roll doubles, like in Monopoly. You get out when you roll a double. It says, what is the probability of getting out of jail on your turn by rolling doubles? Just, I want independent thinking first. Just independent. Okay, so we just learned how many outcomes are there with two dice? 36. 36. And how many opportunities out of those 36 can you get doubles? Six. So 
This would represent how many doubles? And that represents total outcomes. So um, remember, on your warm up and exit ticket, it is one thing to write the answer. But you're only going to get one point. So make sure you're showing your thinking, showing the math. Okay, on your warm up and exit ticket. I pretty much, if I do an example, you can follow along. I know there's a number of kids that take great notes by following along. And it helps with their understanding. What does that one sixth mean in, in this context? Josh? One dice, there is one six percent chance, or one out of six sides of the dice, there is one chance that you're going to get a certain number. Okay, so what does it mean here, though? Uh, Quinn? Uh, well, I just thought of it like six, there's like six sides to a die, or the dice, and then like one dice plus one dice is 36 total sides. And so, like, there's, you can match one with one, two with mm -hmm. two, three with three, and there's six of those. And then out of the total, which would be six out of 36. So, another way to think about it is that if I rolled, if I was to have two dice in my hand and I was to roll it six times, how many doubles would I expect? One. 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 Theoretically, one. If I have two dice in my hand, Josh, and I roll six times, six total times, out of those six total, one of them, I should get doubles. So if you're thinking about getting out of jail, you could be there for a while, right? If you've ever played Monopoly, you kind of get stuck. Going to jail is good, though, so you don't have to land on other people's houses. <laughs> Sometimes it's good. Sometimes. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later.